Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This video is going to be looking at the structural and uh, elemental changes uh, such that there may be in the Lion 2 Diapad 3M cookies as they're called. These are the treated, baked, deuterium oxide soaked nickel and diamond pads that were taken from these uh, hand uh, flexible abrasives that are available from 3M. So I'm just going to do an overview of this uh, Steemit blog which you will then be able to go and delve into the details. So we've included uh, the very close up microscopy, uh, color microscopy uh, videos and then um, we drop right into the analysis. So this was the uh, table in the SEM at Masaryk University and this is the sample that we are referring to in this video which is three discs, two uh, on the cut side uh, and two on, uh, one rather, on the back side uh, that uh, the SEM is of uh, the unused diamonds and nickel discs and this is a sample of those that ran in the Lion 2 reactor. And this is what the unused disks look like in the SEM. So uh, looking at the uh, top side, uh, there's an overview video here which you can delve into. Uh, here is the element distributions uh, and essentially by weight it is essentially carbon, nickel and oxygen. There's an over-representation of carbon here because it's looking at the carbon in the uh, SEM carbon tape that adheres uh, the sample to the background. This is this carbon tape here which you see here. Uh, but yes, you can see the nickel is basically where the bright part of the cookie is and uh, these dark areas here are the carbon and there is some oxygen which may be on the carbon tape or on either carbon or nickel in here. Um, there also appears to be some sulfur and calcium but they are below the uh, detection ratio uh, for confidence uh, for the SEM so it marks them as red. Um, however, uh, when we delve in a little bit closer, uh, when we zoom in, here's a diamond, uh, single diamond here. Uh, and when you look at this uh, up close on the tip, so we're actually looking at this diamond on this tip here uh, in this SEM image here, right close in, right close in, here we are. Uh, when we look at that, there's a video uh, of the actual analysis, and it looks like this. And you can see that it's, uh, again, essentially carbon here. Uh, and it's probably seeing some oxygen on the surface, uh, maybe, and some nickel uh, refracting through, potentially. Um, this is the backside of the uh, cookie, uh, untreated cookie, and also looking at where a diamond is poking through uh, the nickel. And uh, actually focusing in on this area, uh, we found something quite interesting. Uh, you can see here the nickel in green and the uh, carbon in red. Obviously the carbons are bright and intense in the center there. But there was this kind of swirl and this is oxygen and the swirl was prominent again on this aluminium here. Uh, so we have a combination of aluminium and oxygen here and so you can see here it's swirling towards the diamond. This is the uh, aluminium and this is the oxygen, here's the carbon and here's the nickel. So I found that quite uh, interesting uh, but essentially this is actually picking up with uh, certainty or some certainty the uh, sulfur uh, this time uh, because it's obviously closer in and it's getting more samples so it can be uh, a little bit more sure about that and also it seems to be fairly confident that this uh, whatever this aluminium swirl is that's coming in towards the diamond um, is uh, uh, at least it reckons it really does exist. Uh, obviously most of what is in the field of view by weight is, is nickel and then carbon, oxygen and so forth. So uh, then we go on to look at the post line experiment um, state of the cookies. And uh, before we get into that, um, 
MFMP volunteer Alan Goldwater. He uh, found this oxidation of diamond uh, paper, the oxidation of 100 textured diamond. Uh, and what he found out was essentially, here's the diamonds. These look very similar to the uh, diamonds that uh, Francesco Cellani had on his uh, two-layer uh, so-called micro-nanometric diamond wires, which seem to produce quite a bit of excess heat. It even has this spot that they had. It has this kind of little spot that was observed on, on that uh, diamond in the photo that we shared in Mining Diamonds with Lion that inspired uh, my original idea to use uh, industrial diamonds. Uh, uh, really thanks to Francesco uh, Cellani uh, sharing his uh, observation there. Anyway, th this uh, is three different stages of where they have, uh, these are as grown, uh, and this is after oxidation at uh, high pressure and temperatures, and, and, and essentially what happens is the diamond doesn't really change its overall shape, it just loses mass from all sides, uh, the sort of a equivalent ratio, so essentially you can imagine this is getting thinner and it's slowly drawing in from the side. Uh, and Alan did some calculations on this uh, based on the data in this paper and he found that for a two-day run finishing at 800 degrees C for four hours the erosion time might be considered to be 15,000 seconds uh, and this would be 15 microns of oxidation. Uh, based on the 3M uh, diapad uh, product spec the diamonds there are 250 microns so he was uh, calculating that the erosion uh, from oxidation would be around about 6% uh, in that sort of time frame. So, you know, what we are seeing uh, in what actually happened doesn't really hold true to this study. Though this was oxidation at temperature and pressure, but there wasn't, it didn't have water in there. It was uh, um, oxidation, as it were. So what really happened? Well, there's a video here and in some of the diapad uh, used discs the diamonds appear to have basically gone uh, some of them done this weird thing where you've got these spheres these large macro scale spheres and this weird sort of protrusion coming out was observed in one in this video which uh, you'll be able to delve into on the back side again there seemed to be degradation in the nickel structure uh, and bits missing and when you go in even finer there are holes with um, spheres here's a nice little kind of like pearly colored uh, sphere and in the crack in here there is a uh, a black sphere so there's various spheres of potentially different elements or different materials or compounds uh, in here so what did it actually look like uh, under analysis so I'll here's a chip uh, a cookie with a just a few uh, chips in there of diamond um, and as you would expect uh, it has nickel and it has carbon um, but it would also appear that there is a sprinkling uh, what, what first appeared to be uh, bromine but uh, it was because of uh, an automatic analysis uh, mis uh, uh, determination between bromines uh, L alpha and the uh, uh, aluminium's K alpha uh, line, which are quite close. So uh, we th please ignore this uh, BR. It's actually AL, and we corrected it for the map image. So the aluminium you can see is, is seemingly sprinkled over the the, the chips. Uh, the calcium similarly, uh, although there's no uh, incidence of the calcium pretty, pretty much on the background. And the same with the silicon. So we have uh, silicon aluminium and calcium uh, apparently determined other than the nickel co carbon and oxygen that was started with and also it's just below the threshold of determination uh, 0.3 here of titanium uh, but you can see the, the, the clear peak here so we have clear peaks of the aluminium, the silicon, the calcium and uh, the titanium however it just maybe the sample time wasn't long enough or we needed to get a closer shot of this um, uh, but here's that there may have been some titanium there. Anyway, so um, uh, what does this mean? Let's go in a little bit closer to the diamonds. Uh, observed uh, essentially uh, in this sample area here, 37, 
it was essentially carbon and nickel and there seemed to be some uh, not determined uh, amount of uh, calcium there in, in this kind of flat area so essentially it's just a slight slight uh, contamination with nickel on that area this area um, uh, had uh, aluminium and silicon uh, and uh, some carbon and oxygen and other elements that were not to be determined. <clears throat> it's a shame because we had little time and we need to go back and have another look at this uh, because there are other darker areas and other features in here that we didn't really uh, delve into on the analysis that may uh, have resulted in this determination of calcium and, and silicon and aluminium here in the sprinkling. So the, the actual sprinkling here, I suspect, are these various dark, dark or other areas here. Anyway, you can already immediately see that this does not look a lot like this. It hasn't just lost mass. Um, uh, it's kind of been tuned up. Uh, bearing in mind, if you, you look at the <clears throat> diamond to begin with up here, it's really quite smooth. Uh, that's obviously getting in right close. Uh, very, very high magnifications. That's just two microns for less than half the scale there. So you can see it's it's really quite smooth. So. Um, when you come down here, um, something is clearly going on. And let's go and uh, look at what the elements are here. Let's, let, let's, for instance, postulate how these various elements might be getting here. Are they coming from Lena reactions or are they coming from elements uh, detected <coughs> in the uh, fuel tube? Um, because in, in the fuel tube here, this is uh, the looking for heat a fragment or uh, taken from an unused looking for heat uh, lumina tube here. And uh, what we found was uh, uh, all of these elements in various proportions, but only in small little areas where we did a, a little area sample. Uh, other than the sort of spectrum 9 here, which is uh, uh, there were some areas with uh, uh, high area amounts of fluorine, but um, and other areas with high amounts of iron. But uh, essentially, uh, it was aluminium and oxygen, as one would expect. Uh, there were some small amounts of magnesium, uh, which doesn't appear on the uh, diamond post uh, usage, um, <clears throat> and uh, small amounts of calcium and small amounts of silicon in, in various spots, but not in every spot. So we don't see it in spectrum two or three. And we don't see it in spectrum. Um, uh, where is it? We see, we don't see it in spectrum nine, and uh, we don't see it in spectrum eight. So uh, there was some air, sm very small areas where we saw silicon. There were some areas where we saw uh, magnesium, uh, fluorine, and so on. So these are the elements that <clears throat> were detected in the fuel tube. Uh, if uh, we are to assume that maybe there were some Lenin reactions going on. Uh, could they be George Oshawa reactions so that the silicon's coming from a combination of carbon from the diamond and oxygen from the uh, deuterium oxide? Uh, maybe the calcium's coming from two carbons plus oxygen uh, to give us our calcium. Uh, or are they straight deuterium uh, carbon reactions? So uh, two carbons here uh, plus a deuteron um, goes to aluminium or, or uh, a carbon and a deuteron times two to silicon, or uh, three uh, times carbon plus two times deuteron to calcium. <clears throat> and then the titanium is coming from, uh, various isotopes are coming from different uh, 13 carbon, uh, uh, carbon isotopes, uh, or perhaps uh, some other element is getting involved. Um, if the titanium is actually uh, real in there. Well, it's not a massively convincing argument uh, as that stands. Um, but then uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the melting point. Uh, there was no magnesium found on the disks and it has uh, the lowest melting point if it's pure. So if there's some chemical action that was removing that, then uh, why are we not seeing anything there? And also, uh, there was no iron, and there was clear iron found in, in the fuel tube. Uh, why uh, are we not seeing that when essentially the oxides of magnesium and aluminium and calcium and silicon, they, they all melt at extremely high temperatures, uh, much higher than the reactor is able to go in terms of the electric heating capability of the reactor. 
So this is something that I want you to think about and, and, and maybe, you know, what's good for one element is, why isn't it good for another? How is it happening? Uh, is it some form of, uh, uh, what, should, what should we say? Is it some form of uh, chemical and then some sort of chemical and, and physical de deposition that may be going on? Don't know, but then we come to the diamond erosion patterns, and this is where it becomes really fascinating. So we're in at 125,000 times here, just one micron on this scale here, and I'm going to switch to a different tab to really delve into this. <clears throat> okay, so what struck me here, um, and I'll just the, the first feature is this one here, and we have what looks ostens ostensibly like a sphere, and it's in a hexagon-shaped cavity. Uh, what is going on that allows this to happen? Here we have a triangular shaped cavity with a sphere in the center. Here we have another triangular shaped cavity with a blob that's offset and, and slightly in a triangle. Again, this is more like a hexagon shaped cavity with a triangular shaped object in there. You have a triangular shaped cavity with a blob in here. So that's one kind of thing that's going on. You can also see it up here. There's apparently a different blob here and a different blob here, different sort of uh, material maybe, uh, and the blob is in a hexagon shaped cavity here. Then there are uh, what I call miners, and they, they look like they're mining. And so uh, here you've got a, a, something that looks like it's mined here, and up here, and then across here, and it's been met by something that's come across from this angle, and they've kind of joined into a blob here. Here's another little blob in the center of a hexagon. Um, and if I come out and look over here, you'll see. Uh, this, it, it's kind of like mind, mind a channel uh, <clears throat> along the, uh, maybe the diamond plane uh, here. We've got a blob, kind of semi-sphere at this end and a blob at this end in its own kind of little, little hexagon sort of end point. Uh, again, we've got a blob here. This area has been eaten away and so on. And so sometimes it appears to eat the material away. Other times, uh, you get these kind of semi-fused on blobs. So this blob here is, is kind of semi-fused onto an area over here. Uh, you can see a, another one in this cavity over here. Um, uh, there's more over on this side, and we've got to zoom in on that to look at in a section, in a second. Over here, uh, we have something that's eaten a channel this way. It's turned a corner, and then it's continued down here. In this case, it's just on the surface. This case, it looks like it's it's eaten, and it's kind of come to a stop. Uh, most of these appear to follow the uh, the kind of like uh, planes of the diamonds, if, if you can imagine them. This hexagon here, this hexagon here, these cutouts. But that's not always the case. And 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 a good example is over here where it appears that whatever ate across this is just not following the diamond plane lines unless it's it's going down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and zigzagging but it really wanted to move in this direction it didn't want to move in this direction or this direction or this direction or as some things have done they're kind of like burrowing down into the material so you've got a sphere here and it's burrowed into the material down this way here, here you can see uh, there's another sort of round blob on the end of here. This is absolutely fascinating to me. It's really complete departure from the even oxidation that's going on. Uh, and what what does it all mean? Anyway, let's have a, have a closer look in. So uh, we're going to look at this little area over here. This is just a by the by. And uh, again, you can see something's eaten out a hole here. This one's kind of like on surface. Uh, this is a sphere but it's kind of partly embedded over here but it's there's even a, a kind of little spiral here absolutely fascinating the way this has been eaten away but then it becomes even more interesting when you look at the backscatter images compared to the uh, uh, normal SEM structural images and here we have the structure with the backscatter now what you're seeing is in the backscatter image is elements that are heavier will appear brighter. So <clears throat> the bulk of it that you're seeing, this area here, for instance, is carbon. What you're seeing with these white areas here are a heavier element. So typically this might be silicon or the calcium or the aluminium that we found spotting all over the large uh, uh, overview of these uh, diamonds. Uh, and the diapad. So, I mean, 
this whole notion of it kind of like mining what you have here is you have three tracks in a row where they they all seem to be moving in this direction <clears throat> and on the, the the leading edge there is uh, what appears to be a different element and it's kind of like a field of com with combine harvesters you know one two three combine harvesters harvesting uh, uh, the carbon over here you can see there's a hole and at one end it has this and that's the other direction this is this going in this direction this is going in this direction and it can really work in any direction so this is obviously going it looks like it's eating up this way this little bit down here this one's kind of like eating over this way uh, we've got uh, one eating sort of up this way rather than down this way uh, and then you have these blobs which they're not very different and it, it takes us to uh, in terms of their color the, these blobs here these round blobs here and we're going to zoom in a little bit closer <clears throat> so same kind of thing going on here this is this is uh, if you notice this blob here we, we're taking a zoom in on this area uh, and we're a bit closer in so you can see this cavity here has been mined out but um, what is interesting is these spheres here um, they're in many cases like this sphere here they you can almost not notice them which means they may still have a very high concentration of carbon and in some cases like this sphere here when it goes to the um, backscatter you can barely see it at all and this would imply to me at least that if that is carbon it's turning into a sphere and this requires an extremely high temperature because normally you would need it to turn into a liquid and then surface tension to try to encourage it to go into a ball but you know that's weird in itself I mean why is it you know it's just it's just odd um, and you've got for instance here you've got a ball that that's going down into this cavity maybe the the beam can't get in there so it can't determine it um, <clears throat> but uh, it really starts getting very clear this sort of process where it's eating down in this direction eating down in this direction and this is kind of eaten across to one side and then down it's gone up and down and it's left its uh, other element uh, wetted to the surface so you can imagine that this might be the uh, calcium uh, or I don't know silicon um, there's, there's the three options calcium aluminium or silicon and and then you've got to ask yourself why if this was contamination would the contamination go into these cracks and if it was contamination what is causing the cracks themselves in the first place if it isn't the active component eating the material and, and transmuting it into the element that's like on the cutting face uh, or what's in the center so for instance if we go back and we're looking over here you know uh, what has caused this uh, to be in the center or you know what is what is cutting through here I mean what why would contamination drop in there and get rid of the diamond in a track as it were uh, or this this track over here where it's kind of like going round a corner <laughs> why would you have something at the end uh, just contaminating there why didn't it contaminate here or over here why is it going and, and depositing itself at the end um, I, I suspect that this is really telling us uh, that something has moved and eaten through this material. It's moved and eaten through this material. It, this blob here, it's this here, when my finger is probably clearer, it's eaten through this material and it's kind of settled here when the reaction came to an end and, and it's deposited this different element here. So uh, even closer this is really close in so so what we've done we, we've zoomed we're zooming into this kind of area here <clears throat> and you can see here essentially look we, we have these spheres here and when it when it when it goes to the backscatter image you almost can't see them which suggests they are mostly carbon or or or, or carbon um, which is totally fascinating to me how these blobs will appear maybe these are the kind of black spheres that we are seeing um, uh, in the color images uh, on the microscope color microscope images um, what are these blobs I mean look it looks like it's eaten out this channel and it's left it in here uh, and in this case it's eaten out this channel and left it up there so they're, they're not even going in the same direction they're going in different directions 
Uh, this one's over in this corner, this corner, this corner. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating to me. Um, I really would like uh, some other explanations uh, other than what appears to for me to be happening that something has gone onto the diamond surface or been created within the diamond and uh, it's then found a, a weak point or something and it's just started chewing away at the material and when the process is over <clears throat> you either end up with a sphere of slightly different material or a sphere of nearly carbon or these other elements um, uh, on the surface or in the cracks. Uh, maybe you have a different interpretation. In this case, you can see it's like a sphere, so the, in in a kind of hexagon shape. So maybe that's eating down through the surface, and you're seeing the the blob uh, wetted onto uh, the surface in the direction that it, that it's eating. Absolutely fascinating. I'd be very interested in your opinions. Um, and just to close out, the steaming post, steam it post. Uh, I have those images all in there, um, and. You know, the discussion is if it, why, when this is essentially doesn't look like it's damaged much, is there these elements were, that were on the loose dia discs uh, in there? Uh, we also have to have a look at what this pile is in in the centre here at some point. So uh, thank you for your time, um, and uh, please uh, put your comments in the Steam It. That's probably the best way to keep it in, in one place. Uh, I will be answering on other forums.